This is part two of the introductory image mapping tutorial for new Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a. Okay, and in the previous tutorial, we had just finished un uh, marking these seams and unwrapping this, oct this uh, octagon shaped image a uh, couple of times. And this is the latest version that we had in here. And so, let's, since, since we've actually unwrapped it in here, let's now go and add an image to this as well. So recall, if you haven't seen part one of the tutorial, you have to have texture mode set to be able to see the image. And you also have to have gone either, a couple ways you can do it, go into Blender game, into the render button, and set GLSL, because without that you won't be able to see it. Well, you would if you render it, but in this live preview you would not be able to. So uh, we'll go over here to the material button for this object. And let me tab out of here. Look at that. What the heck is that doing? Cylinder. Cylinder. Where the heck is my cylinder? Let me press Z. Okay, there we go. Alright, so I'll press Alt Z a couple times and that gives me into texture mode like this. Alright, so then I'll say new. Uh, texture and that's all I need to do for this except like the previous one I'm going to turn the specularity down and then I'll go to a material I mean I'll go to a texture and I'll say new and where it shows as clouds I'll say image or movie and then I'll go down here and there's going to be something we have to do different this time is uh, I'll open an image and over here I don't know we'll say geometric for whatever it is so it's this image here another image I created in another program and let's see if it shows up. Well, one thing I can't see is it's not really showing up because I don't have a light near on that side. So I'm going to shift D and copy this light down here a little bit over to this. I'll get a light near the scene. Let's see if that's even anywhere close. Well, there it is. It's mapped. So what it did, it mapped it on to the edge. Let's press shift D again. And why put a light over here on this side near it I don't really see it let's see so what it did it just took the image and it mapped it on to the edge of it like this even though if I go into edit mode I was wanting the whole image that would have been in here this is a 1280 by 720 so it would have been 16 9 by 16 by 9 format somehow it would have been laying over the top should be laying over the top of all this stuff somehow but so the, what you need to do down here is since we did a UV map see down here in the type of coordinates we also need UV coordinates alright and then I'll go back up here to the image sometimes well there it is here so it's wrapped around here there there it's wrapped around that side there and that's in part because of the way the image is in the scene uh, like this if I was to open that image let's see if I can just go open that image let's see where is that image open image let me go find that what was that oh, doggone it hang on that was geometric 4. Alright, so image, open image as geometric 4. I'm going to open into the UV editor. So it looks like it's filling the whole space like that. The image is way out like this and that's not quite what I want and it's not mapping it exactly to that so in part, but you can see what's what it's mapped. It's mapped I think I need another light over here. Hang on. Let's take a light over here. G, shift D. I'll put a light on this side as well. See if there's anything over here. Sometimes you can't tell unless you put a light on that side near it. And I don't see anything on that there. And nothing there. And nothing there. So you can see image mapping is tricky and complicated. All right, let me go back into edit mode for a second so we can see if we can try and identify. It looks like this section here is mapped onto that. And then this portion here it was this part of this map, right? So it's the issue is trying to get your image to align with your uh, 
basically your layout that you put out. It's tricky, it's complicated, there's experts at it, and I don't spend near as much time with image mapping because it's just something I typically don't do. I typically program, and image mapping is something that's just n not much that I need for my for my work. So as a workaround, well, so actually what I recommend is that you hunt down really good books and and tutorials from people who specialize in that to really get a handle on it because it's uh, you can get a job just doing this kind of work in and of itself. But for the interim, I'm just trying to give you an idea since you're a new user. And uh, let's for the interim, let's try something else as well. Just I'm trying to give you some insight. All right, so over here, let's try this object also. But we're going to do something different here. So sometimes if I just need something quick and easy, instead of trying to move all those objects around in the scene and, and you know mark the seams properly to get it to unwrap exactly the way I want it, well, maybe I just need something simple, like maybe I'm making a, an art gallery. And within the art gallery, this virtual art gallery, this is, say, a column within the art gallery. I don't want to map individual images, say, on this column. Maybe it's, uh, let's see, maybe the column looks like something like this. Right, here's the column in the space. This is one of our, our out ga art gallery spaces, like this. And I want to map images on each one, so when the customers or the guests come looking around they see an image everywhere so then I just instead of for me trying to unwrap the entire image well there's an optional way you can do it and from with this object I'll just press tab and I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to press uh, the face select button and I'll just do and I'll just click that face and with that face cl clicked I will press P and I will separate it and I'll separate the selection. What I've done is I've just made that an individual object. Now you notice since I tap this is this is the object I'm editing I no longer can, can select that face because it actually is a separate object. Now I'll go over here and do the same thing with this. I'll select that face press P and I'll separate that and so that's now a separate object. So this object is actually named cylinder. It was the first one I put in the scene and I can't see what these are yet because I'm in edit mode. So I'm going to tab out of this and now if I right click here you can see this one is cylinder.03 and this one is cylinder.02. It's just made the names for me and I can change those names but this is probably cylinder01 right there. That one is cylinder01. Alright so we have cylinder 02 and 03 like this. So then, since it's a separate object, I can just go, you know, do the traditional work. I'll bring, I'll go get the, uh, let's see, I'll move this down out of the way. Where's my, let me see, I have to go into edit mode. I'll come down here and I will, since they're all selected right now, uh, where, where is my button? Where there is, mark the seams and unwrap it like that. Okay, so it's unwrapped it into the scene like this and then we'll just leave that like this. See, it's actually projected sideways like that. Okay, so so we already have an image in the Im image editor. Let's go over in, but we still need a, a material for it. I'm going to turn the specularity down on this one as well. And, I'm, and then we need a texture or an image and I'll make that an image. And then We'll go get, let's see, that was geometric four. We'll just go get the same one for this. And there it's in here. And I notice it's it's projected only onto this little space like this. And it's kind of goofy, but we also didn't do a UV projection on it either, like this. So now you see it's image mapped to that part of the image onto there. But so let's let's just go over into this window like here and we can see okay. So since this is all selected I should be able to just press G and move it over and voila. There it is in the scene like that. Alright, so maybe I just want to do it like this. I'll just press I want to oh I'm gonna go into edge select, edge select so the tools I guess I can't go into edge select from there. I'll just shift and hold that vertex, press G, 
and I'll move that over into there so I want to map that like that and the same thing I'll go press G like this and I'll map that in there so now I've mapped it onto the surface that portion of the image just like that and then when I tab out of here there I have the image on the side so then I can just do the same thing with this with whatever image and it makes it easy just to wrap an individual image uh, place an individual image at each location and it's easier for me to orient it than trying to place it all on one. Now of course if you had one giant mural that you're tw trying to wrap all the way around the image the way you resolve that is you just bring your image into your paint program and you divide it into six equal size slices first and save them as individual names one, two, one through six and then you map each one individually onto each face. All right, well, so I hope that gives you some ideas about how to work with it. This, this aspect of a Blender definitely takes a lot of practice. Marking seams and unwrapping images is tricky and complicated, so if you don't get it first, don't worry about it. It's a lot of work, all right? Well, I hope that helps in your animations and artwork, and I'll see you in the next lesson.